Hello Reefers, I'm Jeremy Wade and I am your Canadian Reef Master. Today we're having a look at the one year anniversary of my 10 gallon nano budget reef tank. Over the past few years the cost of this hobby has increased substantially from that of 20 years ago when I started this hobby. This is making it very difficult for new people to enter the hobby. People are looking at tanks of Instagram. These beautiful tanks cost thousands of dollars and most people don't have that money to spend on a hobby these days. It is possible to still have a beautiful reef tank if we budget and focus on coral that are very unique and may have interesting structures or patterns. This tank started as a 10 gallon freshwater starter tank with a hang on filter. It has evolved into a beautiful nano tank with a few upgrades over the year. As you can see, this tank is still vibrant and has a fabulous selection of corals that have an array of colors. This selection of coral include LPS, soft coral, and SPS corals. In general, I spent under $20 on coral in this tank. There are over 20 different types of coral in this tank. We're going to have a look at the different corals that I have in this tank and see that there's diversity that ranges everything from zoanthids to acropora and it's possible to do so in a nano tank on a budget. For any budget tank, the genus Capnella is a great addition. They are easy to keep and grow very fast. Next to this, I have the zoanthid colony. I started this from seven polyps of wild zoanthids that I paid only $5 for. Over the year, it has encrusted a rock the size of a softball. Behind the zoanthids, I have a small gorgonian poking out the rocker. As we move to the right of the tank, you see that I have some more zoanthids, including an utter chaos and some of the rasta zoanthids that I have in my main display tank. I have colonies of anthelia in the far right there, as well as green star polyps encrusting over the rock in the back. This gives some beautiful movement and color to the tank. As you move up in the tank, you see my bank of cardinal hovering in the back there, as well as the main mother colony of my Kenya tree up on the center of the rock. One of the prides of this tank is the toadstool that I have up in center. This was a one inch, five dollar tissue fragment that I grew into this beautiful specimen, showing that even small fragments can produce a great coral. In the upper left of my tank, I have an interesting diversity of coral. I have a green plating montipora, a blastomusa, candy cane coral, a nephthia coral, and some photosynthetic gorgonians. Although these corals are not all ultra vibrant like some of the high end corals you see on Instagram, they have characteristics that are very intriguing and interesting to observe. And just because it's a budget tank, doesn't mean you can't splurge every once in a while and add something really special to the tank. One of the ways I maintain this as a budget tank is I consider the metabolic needs of coral. I choose coral that don't require large amounts of alkalinity, calcium, or magnesium. Therefore, I don't have to buy any test kits to test these parameters, and a water change will replenish any depleted values. I also choose coral that uptake nitrates and phosphates quite readily, such as anthelia, green star polyps, the Kenya tree, or even zinnia, which may be used for nutrient control in a small system. I also dose with vibrant for nutrient control and algae control, and will treat with chemiclean for cyanobacteria. Chemiclean is safe to use in the reef tank as long as it uses directed and use carbon and water changes after the treatment. However, it's best to look at the main reason of why you have cyanobacteria and manage nutrients properly so that you don't have these outbreaks occur. I have a few snails as well as hermit crabs in the tank as well as a lawnmower blenny that keeps the glass clean. Here in the back right of the tank you see the green star pops starting to grow up the side of the tank. Originally I had a hang on filter on this tank. However, I realized I had a canister filter in storage, so I threw this on the tank. Here you'll see me cleaning my canister filter, which I do every two and a half months when I want to switch out some carbon or put a bit of filter floss to buff the water. Canister filters are great for small tanks. It increases the volume of water for the tank, as well as it allows an area for biological and mechanical filtration. 
here's a top-down view where you can see the wonderful diversity of corals that I have. By visiting the local reef shop monthly over the past year, I have been able to pick out a few budget pieces each visit. This has allowed me to build an awesome selection for this aquarium that has grown throughout the year to produce the tank that it is today. This tank now mesmerizes my visitors and they are often attracted to this tank over my spectacular Red Sea Reefer 250 with a lot of higher end coral. I encourage those who are curious about reefing to look into doing a budget reef tank. If you're interested in starting into reefing, talk to your local reef shop about your budget and see what is manageable for you. There are many all-in-one systems that offer a great start into reefing these days. And of course, there's many YouTube channels that offer great information on how to start up your first reef tank. I hope you enjoyed the one year anniversary of my 10 gallon budget reef tank. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for future videos. Take care and enjoy your reef.